Hey everyone, welcome to episode 41. My name is Keisha and I'm the producer. Today's episode is with Caitlin Player, who is a world traveler CPA based in Calgary, Alberta. Caitlin obtained her CPA with PwC and then spent time working with large and small corporations within the Calgary area, and she is now working for the CPA Western School of Business. She joined Sam to discuss her journey to becoming a CPA, how she decided when was the right time to leave corporate uh, Calgary, and how she currently earns an income while traveling the world. Um, this was a really interesting conversation. If you are interested in maybe trying to be able to travel uh, while being a CPA or working towards your CPA or later down the road uh, while still be able to have a career and grow it, uh, this is a really great episode to listen to. So with that, enjoy. Miss Caitlin Player, what crazy activities do you dream of trying someday? Oh, Man, I always wish I was like an extreme hiker. Like I watch, uh, I've been hiking and I look ridiculous, but I think when I see someone just running up the mountain with barely, like, have you seen people with like those sock shoes on? They don't even have full on shoes. They just like have shoe webbing. They're like extreme hikers. They just run through the trees. They don't even use the trail. And you're like, you're over here waiting for your granola at the top where you're just going to eat the Smarties out of it anyways. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure like somebody was like hey you want to go on a hike I was like is there beer at the end of the trail <laughs> like, that's the only way I'm going yeah yeah like smarties like anything like it's your destination <laughs> like uh hot like hot chocolate s'mores like I what what are we hiking towards and they're like yeah I actually heard of some guy I'm gonna try to google this while we're talking cam something Ooh. um I heard about him on like oh other podcasts and like he's you known as like yeah I think an extreme hiker and what in the Olympics the people that they run around a track, but there's all, is it steeplechasing? I think he trains one of the steeplechasers. Um, and then he's like, got her to like follow him up the mountains. And guess what? Uh, she's a better steeplechaser because she runs mountains now. Anyway. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Yeah. See, that's cool to me. Like, I feel like you look at those people, you just know they're fit. Like they're just fit and healthy and just like adventurous. Yeah. But watch them go back to their desk job after they just do that in the morning. And actually. <laughs> Yeah, there is like, uh, <laughs> hello, at and how may I help you? <laughs> like, just like, just like, <laughs> but inside, like they're an inner, inner animal. Yeah, no, I, I love this. I think um, by the time working minutes in, people are going to be listening to this. They kind of realize this might not be the typical podcast. There, may, <laughs> there's no awkward get to know yet. There might be awkward, but it won't be get to know yet because Miss Caitlin Player, I have had the pleasure of knowing you for oh goodness would it be almost almost four years just over four years yeah yeah I think 2018 yeah that's crazy 2018 I still remember the day that we met do you I do yeah I was in Japan yes you were in Japan how did we meet when you were in Japan because I was not in Japan (laughs) I know I think I was trying to think about this before the podcast and I'm like, Sam's going to know it more than me, but we'll, we'll fill um, in each other's blanks. Yeah. I, I, we met through my husband, right. And he was a fancy little discussion board answer on Steve, pa- Steve Pasby at the time. And so his name came up to you and you've heard what we were doing, which was traveling and working. And this was pre-COVID, so we were cooler than everyone, okay? We were, <laughs> we started it, no. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you kicked it off, yeah. So like, there was, in the CPA Western School of Business, where we both work, um, and we're both, well, would you say you're from Calgary or from Edmonton? Uh, I'd say Calgary now. Now? Yeah. yeah. So we both were working uh, for the CPA Western School of Business, so something that's online and in person. Um, we're both from Calgary, but we never met in Calgary. It took you going to Japan where <laughs> <laughs> um, Pat, so Pat is, um, oh goodness, we have regular Pat, um, Pat P, who always does the finance lead discussion board. And then he was going somewhere else and uh, your Pat filled in uh, yeah. for him. So I'm pretty sure we joked about this, that the students had no idea that a new Pat came on because like halfway through it's like new Pat and they... <laughs> um, so then in 2018, when I took over for the National Marketing Center for CPA Canada, 
Yeah. Uh, and it was like January and I'm like, oh crap, I need to build my team. And I wanted to do cool things with fun people. And Pat L, um, your husband was on the top of my list. So I, you know, arranged a, like a Skype call, like literally Skype. This is like pre like cool Zoom. Oh, totally. And yeah. And he was like, yeah, like I'm happy to have a chat and talk, but like I'm traveling right now. And I was like, cool, like let's, let's do this. So, you know, one of the best moments was, you know, seeing him, talking to him. Um, I don't know if he agreed to yet be on the team, but just having time and, and making and getting to know him. And then you and you were there and I got to meet you and in Japan and hear a bit about the hotel uh was it the hotel room or what was different about that place in Japan think, oh because we were we were staying at co-working co-living places a lot so like we work on steroids kind of thing and like um we I work on steroids is that like a name of the co-working co-living no place? no I'm just saying it's like <laughs> level co-working because you're like living with the people too right um, yeah like imagine yeah. all your co-workers and you're living with them but you yeah. don't actually contribute to the same project I gotcha exactly and so when you call us in Japan they don't have like central heating I think this is what we were talking to you about so we were in their co-working room and we had like to come down 20 minutes early to turn on all these heaters because it's and they have like uh what else? I got sick there because I didn't realize this, but like every, their hallways aren't heated because of no central heating. So you have to like put your jackets on to leave your room and everything. <laughs> you know that. Yes. That, yeah. I do recall like a lot of, like a lot of clothing <laughs> and, then, yeah. and it was like, we tried to pick a time, but it was probably like early in the morning for me and late at night for you all. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And so then um, because you were an experienced educator and you had We'll get into a bit more of your background uh, becoming yeah. a CPACA, but um, you had never, you were an experienced educator, you were experienced with cases, but you hadn't yet been trained by the National Marketing Center, which was mm -hmm. actually great for me because we were redeveloping all the materials. And it was a bonus that you were like, yeah, I'm game to like help out and be a beta tester. Mm -hmm. And then one thing led to another and the next three years, we led the National Marketing Center's, um, you know, gosh, management and administrative team. And you were like, yeah, we, we battled all those fires. And I am so, 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 so grateful um, for you. Ditto, ditto. That was fun. It was, uh, it was crazy that you even took a chance on me from across the world. Yeah, but is it though? I don't know. Um, I was thinking about this because you know, everybody's definition of success is different. And some mm -hmm. people want to have kids and work from home. Some people want to be the sole breadwinner. Some people want to, you know, run up mountains, some people, and then go, you know, answer phones or like everybody's yeah. definition is different. And what I really connected with, uh, with you and with Pat, mm -hmm. who will be a guest on in a little bit, um, was not today. Um, <laughs> this is, this not, is us. not allowed, not allowed. Is like, you're doing it. And you're, you know, and that's something that I had done to an extent, not to the extreme that you guys were doing it, but traveling and working and making a living and doing cool things and not waiting until you're 55 or 65 or whatever to live the life that you want to live. And so I really yeah. connected with that. That's yeah. And I appreciated that because I think leaving was hard, to be honest. We got a lot of judgment. Um, pe like people would say peak of our career. I'm like, man, I hope not because I'm not <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like it's cool, I'm but like, I want it to get better. I'm like, I didn't know I was at my peak. You guys are <laughs> leveling me off here. Okay. So we have a quick corporate Calgary and just said, no, we can't do this. We need to do what's right for us. And the fact that you saw that and thought it was admirable was yeah. kind of, yeah, it was nice. It was a nice change from what we were getting from here. Mm. And then COVID hit and everyone's like, Oh, I totally understand. And we're like, okay, now you get it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay. Let's, let's rewind and then, um, come back. Yeah. I really, I want to come back to, um, what led to you leaving other than like, that's awesome. And then actually I want to hear some like practical things of things that you were thinking about leading up until like preparing, preparing to leave, because I think sure. that that's something that is so unique to your story. But first, yeah. Caitlin. Um, yeah. how did you, how did, what was your path to becoming a designated accountant? And let's maybe 
Uh, let's go before starting articling, but after, I don't know, uh, the toddler years, somewhere before that. <laughs> somewhere in there. Yeah. Oh man, I think it was my mom. She, I remember this, I was into like the expensive jean phase of my life as a teenager. And I was like, I'm going to buy these $300 pair of diesel jeans because it'll make me a better person. I really do. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. I still have them by the way. I can't throw them out. Cause I'm like, I worked for these. Um, uh, and she would say things like you better, you know, you better get some sort of job that's going to, going to pay for this lifestyle of yours. And she always mentioned being a CA. She knew a lot, knew a lot of CA. So it got in my head and then going throughout school, I loved math. I loved sciences and I thought maybe engineering or something with that. But then I just, I loved people and, and business and stuff like that. I would, as a kid, I would actually, <laughs> this is great to force my sister to play with me. I would steal her things and then I would make her come buy them from my store in my room. And then I would like keep a chart of accounts of things like the, I was an accountant probably from a young age. Maybe that's where my mom got it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> she was six years older than me and she didn't want to play with me. I'm like, well, if you need your scissors, you've got to come get me. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's a first. That yeah. is really good. So then university, um, I didn't really see, yeah, business just made sense to me. Um, accounting was hard. I remember that first year. It was, it was really hard. And then I pushed through, I had a group of friends that were doing with, with me and they were all of like mine. So it just seemed like I was on the right path. Um, How did you push through? Like, were there any tactics? Um, honestly, it was the people I was with probably. That's been like a theme of my life. I think, uh, not to get too deep, but the people around you going through the same thing, you can kind of empathize with each other, help each other out. It was like a group of five of us that have known each other since junior high who all wanted to be, you know, accountants. And the other thing I would do, and I'm pretty, I'm a pretty bad, bad procrastinator, <laughs> so I know that. But I would, I wouldn't work my ass off all the time. Like I just had fun. Okay. I needed to have fun, or else I couldn't. I needed the balance. So pushing through was like getting working my ass off sometimes but also just letting it completely go others yeah what what were you doing when you weren't uh <laughs> you, working your ass off I was like do you want to ask that no <laughs> uh, hey it's all good <laughs> yeah we were uh there was like two you know university bars that we frequented but uh a lot of the times it was just at each other's houses. I remember specifically one of my guy friends was just obsessed with Metallica for some reason. Oh, yeah. And we would just hang out there. He put on the DVD of Metallica's like live concerts. I can't listen to them to, to, to this day. And we would just hang out and talk about anything but university. Yeah. Nice. Just yeah. chilling. Yeah. Just disconnect. <laughs> cool. And then... When did you, because you went to University of Alberta in Edmonton, correct? Yeah, yeah. So when did you have to declare that you were an accounting major? Um, second year. So you had to get into business. First year was like, yeah, undergrad or sorry. Yeah, you had to get, first year was the year that you had to get like good grades to get into business school. And then first year business, you had to declare your major. Um, so that it was just kind of known to me that I was going to do that. I've questioned it many times whether I should have done it, but like talking to you and knowing my life now, it was good. It was a good decision. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Just, I mean, questioning is good, right? Yeah. I never want to live life where I'm just like not questioning. I'm just like, no, nope, made this decision. I turned right. I must keep going straight. <laughs> like totally. Eventually totally. the world will come around, but I'm not going to go back or question. Like, yeah. I thought business law for a while. I love law. Yeah. And then I was like, honestly, I, I wasn't motivated in it. I could just, I, they were all multiple choice exams. And I was like, well, I'm not even going to study. I'm just going to chance this. I'm such a jerk. <laughs> yeah. what, what was your best accounting class in university? Like your best or favorite? 
my favorite. Weirdly, I really liked management accounting because I'm so detailed. Yeah. So I really liked that. My financial, my like all of my financial accounting ones were so hard. They were so hard. They really are. <laughs> I'm like cough, Sam cough. Like, I feel like you're probably that, that person to a lot of people. Like my, my professor's name was Loretta and she's known as being like one of the hardest professors, but yeah, well, and that's, it's funny because I sometimes talk with like our grads after and I'm like, Hey, do you think I was hard? Do you think the material was hard? Like, what do you think both? And, um, of the people, so non-scientifically they're like, your class is the first time that I realized that the prof and the material can be separate. So you can like either not like one and like the other, um, oh. and they're, but they're also like, um, like some can be really hard and just knowing that like, it's never kind, like better with you, but it's still really hard. I was like, yeah, like this shit's not easy. It's like not it's easy. not. Yeah, you're right. That's a good way to do it is separate it. Cause it's just the nature of it. It's yeah, hard. And- perhaps earlier on, like first and second year or like man, an intro, intro, maybe mm-hmm. like a couple other, um, like maybe audit, but like at some point financial reporting, you got the standards, like it's, they're yeah. not easy standards and they're not intuitive. It's another type of language. So true. So true. But I, for us, when I have to get in there, I'm like, Oh, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because what you teach for the CPA Western school of business yeah. is in my opinion, um, you know, like I taught it when I was there, but uh, now at university, like I'm audit, like audit and assurance, the standards I would say are <clears throat> evolving yeah, faster than IFRS now. And you need to know the IFRS in order to audit it. So like, I would say that you have a technically more demanding position like That's true. Than what you teach. I know. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's true. I think people get surprised when they get to audit insurance in the CPA, in the CPA program, how financial reporting heavy it is, but mm-hmm. it's the nature of it. Like you're auditing risks because something is going wrong. Yeah. Fact. And you need to know the standard in order to know what the risks associated are. So totally. like my little pitch to like, I'm like, Hey, like everybody, all this, all this stuff is equal. We're all good. But like without financial reporting, there is nothing to audit and there's nothing to tax. So yeah. <laughs> So we need it. Yeah. <laughs> so we win. Yeah. <laughs> Spend all your time. No, it's not not a competition. No. Okay, cool. Um, and then did you do any because it's not a mandatory co-op program? No. So how did you like did you work during school? Did you have or was your oh. graduation date? Like, how did you kind of make that transition? Yeah, so I did co-op um at, in Edmonton. So U of A, and then, um, but even before that, I always worked, I worked from a, when I was like, as soon as I could, like, I think it's 14 or whatever, really, when you're supposed to start, I can't remember. Um, I worked- When you're allowed to start, not when you're- allowed to start, I think <laughs> yeah. that's, yeah, supposed to, sorry. Oh. No, 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 I- In my family, it was supposed, supposed to. Supposed to, yeah. Get out of the house. Um, you have $300 jeans to buy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> an investment. <laughs> Um, yeah, so co-op was just, uh, something that I wanted to do to ensure I had a job at the time because jobs were like really hard to come by at the time. So I got into the co-op program, did that, and then asked for a transfer to Calgary in the end, but all throughout university, I worked, I worked, um, one of my, I always work customer service job. I don't know why I'm not good with like whiny people. (laughs) And one of them was a pool and I, I'm a swimmer. So I always like, well, this is convenient. I'll get free memberships if I do customer service at these pools. And I would just sit there and listen to people come out and complain that like the things are dry, the dryer's not working and all these things. I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> I, I'm not, I just, <laughs> I don't, I, it was not meant for me. So it made me like, yeah, university. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Um, so you are so chill though. Like I would say that like one of the reasons like we, we complement each other. Well, we also have a number of overlapping values and strengths, Mm -hmm. but like we also compliment because I'm a little bit more like, and like, you're like, you're like chill. And sometimes we flip flop, but like you're, I can see somebody like complaining to you for like a long time. And you're just being like, that sucks. (laughs) Yeah, that is correct. Or I would just be like, you're you need some help. Like, 
You need some help. Here's a refund. Here's your $5.99 back. Like, please, please. See you later. Absolutely. Oh man. Yeah. There was, but I remember the time when I was dating my husband in university, he was like, I'm surprised you're not fired for just (laughs) how you, how you do it. Yeah. It's very pat. Cause he's like, you know, you have the job done. You make sure you do it well. And I take, I specifically one guy came out when I say the, like the bathing suit dryer wasn't working. He's like holding his wet bathing suit. What do I do with this? And I just took his bathing suit and I ringed it out on the floor and plucked it back at him. I was just like, no, that's how you, that's how you deal with life, man. <laughs> well, oh my goodness. Um, I'm, I know I'm going to bathing suit ringing because that's like a metaphor. It's a skill set to be like, okay, this is mission critical and needs to be solved. This can be yeah. solved with a good enough. And this yeah. is something we are going to accept <laughs> and move on. <laughs> it's like professional judgment. Not if we dry them completely. Like, no, just <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Like throw a hairdryer at him. Like, here you go. Yeah. Okay. So you were the firm that you were working with in the university for your co-op. Mm-hmm. They we're like, cool, here's a transfer to Calgary. And that's where you started. Yeah. Price Waterhouse. They were cool with it. They, um, Calgary at the time needed lots of people. Oil and gas was doing well. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they were really cool with it. They were, um, they weren't like jazzed that they spent time training me. Yeah. But I think because I, I, I made a good case too. I was just like, I don't, I'm not interested in the industries here and stuff like that. So no, this is, I want to dig in just for a brief moment because I could see a number of our learners being like, oh, well, I want to work in X city. I shouldn't even bother being here. Or I would like to, so you talk to your manager and you made a case and instead of saying, I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, instead of saying why it would be good for you, you said why it would be good for the company and you and how you can contribute more to the company. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Cause you're like, I'm not interested in these like industries. Exactly. That's, that's, that's truth. I'm interested in these ones. I see a business need. So it's like you yeah. complemented the two together. That's precisely right. Like I knew that they were looking for people in Calgary and I knew Edmonton wasn't. Yeah. So I was like, would you, would this resource, which I was be better suited to go to Calgary? It's basically my case. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it a and scary then- conversation to have. It was usually, I don't know, I'm that type of person when I want something, I just go for it. So I was pumped. I was like excited. I love change. I might be a little too addicted to it. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I, you don't change for change's sake though, right? Yeah. No. You also don't no. back down, back down to a challenge. Always get the job done. But like, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I remember that. I remember the partner I had to talk to, I was nervous about, but they were so understanding. I think they understood that, yeah, people, people need, you know, what they, I don't know. I feel like they understood that, um, your values are going to change the way your work performance is like what you, or what you want to do will make you a better worker in the long run. Like if you end up somewhere where you really want to be. Yeah. You're going to benefit the firm more. Absolutely. So, yeah. So then you're at PwC in Calgary. And what does that look like as far as studying and working goes to getting your designation? Yeah. PwC was, I think you can talk to anyone. It was hard. It was a lot of hours and studying late nights. Um, I'm the ultimate procrastinator. So I was like Friday from four. You always got off early on Friday. That's one thing about price. I think that's one thing about Calgary is like Fridays. If you book a meeting after three, like no one's showing up. Yeah. So Fridays, that was good for me. I would like finish the job Friday at three, do my whole assignment from three until seven, and then go out and just, you know, douse myself in vodka. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hashtag from life. But they were amazing. They were supportive. They always had materials for us throughout the way. Like it was, they always had workshops. They had things that were, I don't know. I always felt very supported throughout Casby legacy program. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you have the, the firm mom, um, when you were going through at PwC? 
I'm trying to think. I know there was someone, but yeah, I can't remember who it was that just like organized all that. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was doing workshops in Calgary, all my PwC people would come with these like custom, like it would be the materials from the workshop, but then like printed and like flagged and stuff. Found. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, we have this woman at work and she's like our CPA mom or CA mom and she yeah. prints all the materials. So you had, she was around too. Yeah, she was around. I just can't remember who it was. Why am I blanking? It might have changed too by the time I was there, but I, I don't know. It was, it was a, yeah, we always had coiled books. Like I still kept them because some of them were so, they had like um, personal tax books that I still reference sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So they just had someone handling that for us. And well, and like, yeah. it's a good thing to kind of point out that, you know, we always think that people that contribute to different things are make these like grand gestures and not saying that that wasn't no time because that was, you know, considerable okay. amount of time and steadiness, but it's like, you know, that the small things can really be the big things sometimes. Huge. Like I, when we found out, like my husband was at Deloitte that they weren't getting that kind of treatment. We were like, thank you so much because I just show up to like my module workshop I've got everything I need and like I don't have to think about a thing and I'm usually hungover so it's perfect <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh <laughs> one of the girls like I um I don't think she went home after her Friday night and she went to oh. the workshop and she's on one side of me and then another girl like that didn't know her was on the other side and there was one person, like our session leader walked by, like the instructor. And yeah. this girl was like, I think our session leader is drunk. And I'm like, no, it's that person. And she like walked by and was like, oh, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> like, A distillery. Oh, yeah. Not like, yeah, not glamorizing anything because, you know, it's, it's just one of those realities that it's hard. Like, it's, it's yeah. hard and different people cope in different ways and not saying, not judging, but also not saying that that's the only coping mechanism out there. Um, totally. I think running up a mountain, you know, if I could yeah. go back in time, I'd be like, go run a hill, Samantha. Like, just go. Holy shit. I would too. I'm like, try working out once, Caitlin. That might help your mental state. But I'm like, no. <laughs> I can't leave my desk. Yeah. No, yeah. I think that what's really cool now is seeing with them um, that kind of, I hope I'm going to say post COVID, but we'll see like the, yeah. um, all of the values for work-life balance travel or work-life integration or like, Oh yeah. Like I can achieve my goals, but I can also do what I want. Um, I think like, I'm really liking how it's being reflected in, in some of the workplaces. I think that at times perhaps some people may or may not expect, back to all of that now so it's it's yeah. it's tricky balance because it's like yes go work towards it but also realize that their corporations making making money so if you can demonstrate your case if you can demonstrate that you're going to do a really good job mm -hmm. um and you've already done a good job you have a history of it and you're like hey i would like to go you know for four weeks and i realize i have two weeks vacation so can we either arrange something where i'm working remotely yeah. Or where I can take some unpaid time off, like you kind of, it's like a bank. You can't take a uh, withdrawal without making deposits first. Totally. Like I was actually thinking about that because currently looking for, you know, maybe some, a job to fill a bit more of my time right now. And there's always that period of time. You do have to prove yourself first. Like you have to make that deposit. And I think oh, that's a little bit lost with what's happened with COVID. People just like want this balance right away which I'm all about balance yeah, completely, but you do have to, you know, make sure you're trusted before that. Um, mm -hmm. Trust yeah. is huge. Uh, and then once you get it, hopefully you have, you have the flexibility after that. Well, yeah. So. Once you establish it, I feel like then it's a conversation. Whereas before, like oh. the first little bits, everybody, both sides are working out the other people. Like they're like, can oh. I trust you? And you're like, can I trust you? Can I trust you? Can I trust you? And it's, yeah. it's, a, yeah. it's a trial <laughs> period for, for lack of a better term. Okay, so I want to get into this part because I know that a number of our students might be thinking, you know, I don't want to work in a firm. I want to work in industry. And maybe mm -hmm. they're like, I want to learn the lessons from the firm, 
I'm going to run up a hill instead of dousing myself. Um, but once, uh, or, you know, whatever other coping yeah. mechanism or balance, like, you know, or putting in those deposits and then take, taking small withdrawals, but then they're like, but I really want to transition to industry. So for yourself personally, how did you make that transition from firm, uh, to industry? Mm -hmm. Um, so it was kind of just, there's always going to be people that stay at the firm and then, you know, right away, who's not going to, um, I was one of those people. Like it was, it was not, I didn't hide it. I was like, Hey guys, if you're, if you're a job, like, <laughs> you know, no, but I made the transition, uh, to a big oil and gas company thinking that would kind of cushion the blow. Um, just because I was so used to a big company. I was mm -hmm. so used to a lot of people around a lot of people, my age. So I decided to move to Suncor. Um, well, I didn't decide they decided to hire me, I should say. <laughs> but yeah, and it's funny because Price Waterhouse in Calgary, their building and Suncor's building are the same. So I didn't move very far. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't take a huge chance. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I went to a big company thinking that would be kind of a nice transition period. And then after that, I took big risks and went to smaller oil and gas companies. Um, but to be honest, I knew, I knew it was time. I knew after my third busy season, uh, I didn't see a management track for me. I didn't, I didn't want that lifestyle. So, or that, I guess that industry, I didn't want audit and insurance. Yeah. So I wanted to try it out. I wanted to see what oil and gas had to hold. Um, I know that's specific to the industry, but yeah, I wanted to see what industry was like. And I wanted to see the other side. Mm -hmm. Like you're always that auditor in the office, like, please give me that, please, please. And then um, I wanted to be the person that was like, no. <laughs> or like, I'll get back to you on Monday you. Yeah. after my weekend. Yes, that's what I wanted. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was- What role did you go into at Suncor? I went into corporate accounting at Suncor. Um, it was kind of the one thing I did realize is like a big company is a big machine and you're just a, a piece of it, which eventually at first it was so nice for me just to like let my mind rest for a bit. And then like, unless you go out and try to make work for yourself in that, at that time at Suncor, I was, uh, um, I was finding myself a little bit listless. So I, I, I needed more and there was opportunities there for more, but, um, I, I wanted to try a smaller joint and see if maybe that was a better fit. So okay. yeah. Where'd you go? I went to Kelt Oil and Gas um, and they, oh, it was awesome. They were a small, small shop, worked my butt off, uh, learned a lot, learned a lot. Um, but at that point I knew uh, after two years, I think two or three years there, um, I knew it was time for us to make a call on our life and we had always wanted to travel and we were like okay so hit, my husband and I were both in the industry and we were like do we want to continue this like CFO track like everybody wants when they get their well, CA at the time and we were like no no let's do it let's go traveling and that's that's the job I left to travel yeah um, so I did two after two after the firm one big, one small. One big, one small. Yeah. Same, yeah. same, same. Like I, I yeah. didn't realize have parallel, except my small was first and then I went big, but then you both, big. Okay. both the same outcome. Um, did you find that you had the skill set when you made the transition first to industry or were there things that you had to um, oh. pick up along the way? It is so different. So that was actually something I meant to get into there is there was the weirdest little things that you didn't realize you had the skill set for it's not the accounting you've got it like um at the firm I find and anywhere I'm, I'm sure you get trained very well but the, at the firm I was trained super well work ethic was great everything like I could pick up on things quickly um but like the stuff that I didn't realize I wasn't trained on like printing a spreadsheet mm. um this is probably so archaic now nobody's printing spreadsheets but I had to print like the first day on Suncor at Suncor. And I was like, well, how do I do this? Like what spaces do I use? I, I think I printed one spreadsheet like 10 times, like those little things yeah. that you didn't realize there's just a different world and it, it comes quickly though. 
Yeah. Do you think it was specific to industry or do you think it was just specific to being in another company and there's different sets and processes? Like I remember not being able to find the washroom one day when I had like a oh, new yeah. job and it's like all of those things, they pile up and you're, you're in the middle of like, for me anyways, like you're a new place. You're like, Oh, my skill set's going to tra- like transit blah, blah, blah. Like, is everything going to be okay? And then it's like the little things that really like almost beat down on you. And then until you kind of realize after a week, like, okay, I got this. Yeah. It's fine. Like the accounting, like you said, is the same. It's applied a different way. It's just a different company. They might use, I don't know, SAP instead of like blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that's exactly right. It was all the, I shouldn't say soft things that were different. It's all like the the admin stuff that was different. I remember that too. I remember like not being able to find the bathroom at one of the places. Yeah. And, And then eventually I figured out which the best bathroom was, you know, that's how you do it. Yes. absolutely or like hey I can waste an extra 10 minutes by going outside walking around the, the building and coming back up yeah it, it, you bring up um an interesting point with um the different changes of pace because it does tend to and one of our guests talked about this but in industry it's very much like cycled if you're in a financial reporting role it's very much cycled around financial statements which mm-hmm. it's like a no duh but at the same time it's just a different deadline than you might be used to in the firm because you're like, okay, instead of having multiple clients, like you're on one client, you're in the client and you have to produce these financial statements each quarter and then a bigger one at your end. And then yeah. there's all like the accompanying things. And then again, the auditors and it's like, okay, your deadlines are right before like all those other deadlines. And yes. it's, yeah. Oh, and you might have some monthly statements and you might have some like, you know, regulatory things, but it's all cycled around. Like it's driven differently. It is driven differently. And uh, yeah, that's, I was going to say something about the transition to, oh, being on at the firm when you have multiple clients, I found it so, like you become so adaptable without knowing. So that's why I was going to say those admin things just like, moving from job to job and I haven't done that too too much but like it just seems you can adapt to anything because the accounting is the same and then if you have deadline based it just shifts yeah you're right all those things that aren't necessarily intuitive when you're thinking about like when do I want to take vacations when are am I going to be available what's my work what's my average day week month and then when are the spikes going to be and there are just different things that you know part of this podcast is you know, talking to Samantha from 2008 and kind of like, I I always knew go to university, do get your degree and then you'll be okay. And Mm -hmm. that's, you know, the narrative, um, that was in my family, but I never knew what to do after. Like Mm. what, what about after? Because their whole mindset, um, you know, being a first generation university graduate was like, go to university, you'll be fine. But then I'm here and I'm like, Hey, I'm almost done. Like what? Oh, there's so many things. Yeah, there's so many options. That is huge. That is, you're right. Because, well, at the time for us, we had to go to a firm to get our CA. So it was just, that was known. But after that, what do you do? What do you do with it? And I remember hearing all the time when I was young, your CA opens doors. It just opens so many doors. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I thought you're just, you just be a CFO. You're a CA, CFO. It just takes a while. And then now, now I'm seeing that, like it really does. It's just such a good background yeah. to have your yeah. CPA. Yeah. So let's, let's, you know, share what those doors are. And let's, I love it when people put numbers to things or like, if people are in my office, I'll flat out, you know, tell them how like different milestones. I'm, I used to think that making, you know, $40,000 a year was a lot of money. Right. Yeah. And then I used yeah. to think that, um, you know, making like paying $40,000 in taxes a year was a lot of money. And, and now it's like, there's, it's not money. It it is, it's part of it. And I'm Mm -hmm. very privileged to say it, but at the same time, it's like, you have the time, money, quality, like trade-off and you can't, you know, are you going to prioritize money and understanding that there might be a trade-off with like the time and your quality of time, or what, what are you going to prioritize? Because it's not just about, for me, optimizing the money thing. It's like trying to optimize that time, money, quality, like triangle. I was, when you said this success earlier, I'm like, success to me is balance. Mm. Always. It's like, and I will always be striving for balance. I know that I'm not naive to the fact that I'm like 90 year old, 90 year old 
Caitlin's like, I finally got it. Like, no. Yeah. So, so striving towards it, but like, would you say that you've achieved it ever? I would say I'm like, I'm very happy. And that's another thing I think balance equals success to me, but, um, happiness comes from balance for me. And I'll always be that person. I think we all will will be all these accounting students. We have that drive that, that I want something to, to strive for. Like, I want that position. I want that, like, maybe it's money. Who knows? Maybe maybe it's that fitness goal. I don't know what you're doing, but then I also want that, that aspect of my life that nourishes me in a way that I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. Um, I want my people around me. I want my me time. I want, you know, I just want to be healthy because then I can't get that, that goal that I'm trying to achieve. Yeah. That is hands down success to me. And I think the world is changing in a way that they're moving towards that, which is wonderful to see. Cause I, when I was going through the program, it was like, if you're not, you know, sitting at your desk, you're not succeeding. And yeah. I don't think that's true. Yeah. I completely, I, I completely agree. I never bought into the narrative of like, oh, I worked 85 hours. Like, oh yeah. Well I worked 85 or I worked oh. 90. And it was like, yeah, but what the fuck did you do during that yeah. time? Because like, did you just sit there? Cause I got, yeah. I got stuff done. Like I learned really? stuff, I did stuff. And then I went home and I had a nap. So. Yeah. That was like, I love that about places that I work. They always would say like, we're not clock watching. Yeah, you are. And now yeah, like you're making me charge my time and you're looking at it yeah. and you're right. Like, I feel like half the people that were charging their time, I was like, let me see your browser history, man. What were you actually doing? <laughs> Yeah. Having that discussion of like quality time. And yeah, with, um, the working from home from COVID and possibly like beyond it's, it's more objective based. What did you accomplish? How did you accomplish? Are you, you know, are you achieving your goals? Um, I love that about academia in the sense that, you know, um, in a little bit, I'm going off for, for dinner, um, at the governor's house. And tomorrow I'm putting on a presentation, (laughs) um, for, um, military personnel transitioning out of um, the military into entrepreneurial efforts. And I'm like, I just love that. It's like, does this, when you're asked for something, you can say, does this align with my skill set? Does this align with um, my strengths and my interests? And if the yeah. answer is yes, and you have time available or you can make time, then you can do it. And I mm-hmm. feel so, so privileged in academia, but it's not just academia where people in, you know, cause people can say, oh, well, you're an academic, you know, you're not, you don't, you're not teaching from May to uh, till August. It's like, no, but there's other requirements. There's other service things, but it's yeah. also not just academia. It's, you know, seeking out those opportunities um, to make it for yourself, which is we're coming full circle. You're at Kelt. How long did yeah. it take when you and your husband had a talk of like, Hey, we <sighs> want to go do this. How long did it take from that almost like initial idea or like, mm-hmm. not the idea, but like that we're going to do this to yeah. when your ass is on a plane? Six months. Okay. And, and when that was like- honestly, like I, I can say that very, very clearly because we were trying to sell our house and it wouldn't sell. So honest, we would have left earlier, but once we planted that seed and we're very different people, like we're like, we like change, like I've said. So we were excited about it. Um, Once we planted that seed, we were like, let's go, let's do this. Um, And, but then the other thing is like, we wanted to do it in an elegant, if that's the term for it, a professional way um, that we don't burn bridges. um, But at the same time, you have to do what's right for you. And hopefully the people around you understand that. So it's not like I, I stuck around. I knew I gave, I gave enough notice that would allow them to find someone. And then I stuck around even longer after that because our house wouldn't sell, but there was, it was just imminent that we knew it was happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. (laughs) And then, so if it's not too personal, um, how did you make money on the road? We facilitated. Yeah. We, uh, so we started facilitating before knowing that this could maybe lead to something where we could travel and work. Um, so we marked the C, C PAS, we programmed the whole time. Uh, we had those five to six week breaks in there, like candidates do. And it was honestly perfect. It, I don't think when you're traveling for that long, so we did a year the first time, uh, having a purpose 
and something to like sit down and be like, I have to get this done was nice for us. And I think we just have that mindset. Yeah. That we need, we need something to like work on. So it was wonderful. It allowed us to go places. I will say though, sometimes because you needed to be in touch with your candidates with a 24 hour turnaround on emails, um, it didn't allow us to go too remote. So I wish we had timed some things better on those five, six week breaks where we could just go like scuba diving with no Wi-Fi. But yeah, that's how we made our money. <laughs> and because I know that and we'll get into Pat's story in a little bit, but there was also some consulting in there as well at other oh, points yeah. in times. So education um, consulting or teaching for CPA West. So through the professional education program, uh, the modules that students would take if they go that route uh, towards mm -hmm. their CPA program, some consulting and then focusing on the travel. So where did you all go the first time? Oh, the first time we tried to wrap the world. We thought that would be a cool thing to say. Um, but we went through Iceland into like Europe, went all the way to Hungary, and then we uh, came home. I think Hungary, yeah, was that the furthest east? I can't remember. Um, I'm also horrible at maps, so me too. I'll definitely, yeah, I'll definitely say something wrong here. Um, <laughs> geography, I should say it. I even called it maps. I'm horrible at maps, that's how bad I am at geography. I, I get um, you, yeah. <laughs> And then we came home quick for just a family issue. And then uh, and then we went back the other way. So we were like, okay, we'll wrap it the other way. We went through um, Hawaii to get to Japan and then down into Southeast Asia. And that was, oh, Japan, everybody go to Japan. It was the best. I, don't be scared of the non-central heating. Just put a jacket on. No, that's actually, yeah, just, just, just bring a jacket, yeah. put it on. That's actually the second time this week I've heard that Japan was just amazing. So exactly. I, I've i flown through it. I've had layovers, but I haven't stepped outside the airport. So I will. I will now. Do. Do. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we, we did a lot of Europe and then a little bit of Southeast Asia. Yeah. Amazing. So you came home a little bit before um, COVID hit, probably, I think, was it like six months? Or, yeah. And the intent was to regroup, possibly figure out what, because you rented your house. So figure yeah. out what to do with the house, figure out like a few things here and then go back out in the road and then COVID happened. So Yes, exactly. We we're going to try to crank out some work, make some more money and then use that to travel again. And yeah, that was, I mean, like, we're super lucky that that was the only thing that it held us back on. We already did our one year trip. There's so many other people, but that, you know, we're planning to do things and retirees. I know my, my in-laws were planning to get out there and start traveling finally. And it just curbed that they're, they're off doing their thing now though. So, but it held us back for a bit and now we're back at it. You're back at it. I know. Yeah. So where did you just come back from? Scandinavia. And it was wonderful. Um, everybody says they're like, well, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll fit in right when you get there. Cause I'm blonde. I'm like, but I'm obviously fake blonde and they'll know right away. I'm not a local. <laughs> <laughs> How was it? How was the food? How are the travels? How was it like, um, getting back into that traveling lifestyle? It was interesting because I, I will say, uh, the years of COVID kind of feel like, I don't know, time, a time warp, yeah. but we are now like 34 and 35. Um, at the time that we wrapped the world, we were a bit of an older traveling couple. So, uh, we were about 29 and, or whatever. I can't remember. Um, but I really felt my age this time. However, now knowing things about traveling and working and knowing what makes us happy it allowed us to like take breaks when we needed to. We weren't so like see everything, do everything. We were like, why don't we do like three things and yeah. then chill and eat some food and drink some stuff and, and have a good time. And that, it, yeah, almost like older, the wiser yeah. you, you allow yourself to really enjoy life versus yeah. I don't know. For Rather me, than like having a checklist and be like, I exactly. need to do this in this country, this in this country. You're like, you know, um, what's the point in seeing it if I'm not going to enjoy it? So exactly. quality over quantity. Yeah. So it was, that was great. The food was, I wouldn't say the food, my cup of tea there. It's more Pat, my husband's, it's like a lot of like meats and stuff. 
I would find the pizza joint next door. <laughs> make it make it work. Yeah, yeah. but That's funny. It was beautiful. Those countries are beautiful. Just wonderful. Yeah. And do you have anything uh, up next, or is that still in the pipeline? Still in the pipeline. I had a. I dabbled in. I was thinking about doing like a passion project where I would help out a. I really like architecture, hence why I was just in love with Scandinavia. They're mm. far beyond us. Um, and I thought I would dabble in that a bit, but funny that you mentioned earlier, anywhere you go, accounting's accounting. And so when I got there, I, I had this idea in my head that I would be immersed in like architectural stuff. I'm like, no, accounting's accounting. I'm just seeing accounting here. <laughs> so you got to figure out, I got to figure out what I'm going to be when I grow up, but no. Oh my gosh. I'm, yeah. If, um, if somebody were to say, Hey, um, if like 80 year old Caitlin were to come up and like offer to have a visit with you, would you ask her like, Oh, what are all like the places I'm going to work or what are all the things I'm going to see? Like, would you want to know what's next and what to figure no. out what you're going to be when you grow up? No, me either. No, never. No, I think it's so exciting. And like what quitting our job and taking our, or like taking our designation on the road has done yeah, has been like, I don't know, but all I know is like, it's going to be okay and it's going to be good. And I'm going to do things that I want to do now. So yeah, I would be, I'm, it's so exciting. Not knowing. It's and, very exciting. Not knowing yeah. a little bit of like, but, woo, but like yeah. Yeah. But exciting in that, um, because you have a skill set, and I really, I want to actually highlight some of the work that we did. I'm getting excited now um, for the National Marketing Center because I feel like, like I'm what I'm seven months past my my time, not even, and you yeah. are getting up to your one year uh, quit anniversary. Yeah. Um, and I will say that um, I I am so grateful and proud of you and the work that you did, and I'm also really grateful and proud of the way that you exited. Um, so I just want to, what do I want to do first? I do want to highlight. So first I will say that, um, I gave my notice and then, um, you, we, cause we had talked, uh, afterwards. And then you were saying like that, that you think it's going to be your last year. And you set me up in such a good way, uh, to ensure that when we went live with the project, like all the planning was done, all the documentation mm -hmm. was done. And it was just a really good transition. So I feel like you gave such a um like a best practice and how to transition out of a role and out of a company mm -hmm. um i just want to highlight those some of the things that you did do so for example when we had the hotline um and you worked with our dal uh, hotline yeah. servers and our leads and just you know having those weekly meetings um when things were fast and furious when things were dynamic when things were changing um mm -hmm. how did you find out working with those dal students and uh, recent grads Oh, it was fun. Oh my gosh. It was so fun. They probably saw me at like a very stressed out point. So I hope I was still chill. No, they, they were like, I'm so chill. Like they were like, <laughs> oh, really? yeah. well, inside I'm just like, because ah. <laughs> you have a million things, right? Like yeah. we're just like a million things and like that project. And it, yeah, that what they didn't see going on. Well, they did. They got to see candidates coming in. Yeah. and noting issues before we even knew them yeah so they got to see kind of the chaos that could happen and the then they got to see me and you who were putting these fires out all the time um yeah. and they were wonderful they were they would point out things that I, yeah I was like this is perfect they always showed up to the meetings which I'm like isn't it summer there like what <laughs> summer <laughs> I expected them to open up their laptop on a patio and I'd just be jealous but yeah, so they were, yeah, it was so much fun. It was such a good change of pace for me to talk to them too. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, just so stressed out. And then I get to talk to them and they're like, it's okay. Like, this is what they told me. And I'm like, that's perfect. Thank you. And you guys are all chill and you're young and you're happy. <laughs> oh, the energy and like the problem yeah. solving. So to put it into context, we had, um, we plan all year at various levels and then there'd be about eight weeks for capstone two and it you know every week there was two cases that were being marked so we had 
you know, 14,000 cases being marked. We had at least like 150 to 300 markers. We had team leads um, leading each one of the marking centers, uh, one marking center per case, um, and their team of people. And, mm -hmm. and then we had the hotline workers, which was one of our frontline QC in order to sort the candidate questions to make sure they went to the appropriate people, QC items. And then it felt like a lot and that's if everything were to go well. Yeah. And it's yeah. what our job was is to like <laughs> plan out everything, put the systems into place, do the hiring, do the evaluation, do the communication, do the, you know, ensure the payment systems. But then what happens when something breaks and like, like what happens when one computer system doesn't talk to another computer system? What happens when somebody goes MIA? What happens when, um, you know, just all of the things and being able to see all the dominoes. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what you plan for is you plan to be there so that, you know, when stuff goes wrong, you have the energy to fix them, not just the energy, like the capacity, the critical thinking um, and understanding, not, we say we're busy. I was like, oh, but it's like not seeing an issue and blowing it up. But at the same time, not being like, oh, that won't be an issue and just lots yeah. of communication. So how do you think we made it work um, doing this being remote because that might be something that a number of candidates or um, you know potential CPA students or aspiring education professionals are considering. It's like how do I how do I build a team, build a relationship, get shit done, and do cool things in a remote environment? I that's such a good question, and I think like honestly, just being yourself, like you have to like almost exude more of your personality through remote work and I can't help it you know that Sam like my emails are always ridiculous like I I'm so I'm quite casual with my emails which I should probably check myself on sometimes but no because like when they needed to be like top notch yeah. you had that skill set but you leaned into your personality which is great well and I think that's the biggest thing is you have to make connections and half the time you, I, I don't even know people's faces yeah. that I've talked to for years and I, but I know them. Like I know if you ask me about them, I'm like, this is exactly how I would describe that person. This is their skill set. This is all this stuff. And I think just coming across that way, making sure, you know, have some casual conversations outside of work. Yeah. Just, um, what else? Oh, I can't, yeah, dealing with the remoteness. Uh, respecting boundaries, hmm. that's huge. Cause remote work is like, I can email you any time of the day. Yeah. But like Sam was so good at this. She'd always say, hey, this is like for not right now. She would always, you know, disclaimer at the beginning of the email. This is just when she was working. Don't think you have to answer me tonight, you know, kind of thing. Just respecting that. Yeah, that that went a huge way, a long way, I should say. Yeah. And with that communication, right? Communication, yeah. You know, sometimes we'd send each other FYI emails and like flat out say, don't answer. Or like, yeah. this is for, it'd be like in July. And we'd be like, this is for November. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put that away. Put that in your folder. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What about... So I know for me, something that I tried to do with um, building building a team and having people at different places in both their energy that they can invest in the program, because like, let's face it, um, most people were had other jobs, had other full-time jobs or yeah. other part-time jobs or any other things. I think like, we both had other education commitments. So mm -hmm. it was like, you know, creating an environment that people wanted to be there versus you know, um, punitive. And yeah. I know that that's something that we really strive to do. And I want to put some context behind that. So something that I tried to do is always show why we were doing something like mm. bring it back to like, you know, Hey, this kind of sucks right now. And like, I understand like we're developing this and blah, blah, blah. But like, once we get this kind of hammered out with your feedback, like the learners will be better served for it. Yes. Yeah. Always providing them with like a, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, you did so well at that. And even like commiserating sometimes, like even that first sentence, that's huge. Like I would have markers and uh, like leadership people, um, people working with us, just like, this is really bad right now. Like I'm working really hard. I'm like, yeah. I know, I'm sorry, I'm with you. Like we're all doing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like 
I remember I kept, um, we were able to, I think save like $10,000, which out of like $3 million, three and a half million dollars doesn't seem like a lot, but I, I saved it and earmarked it and like protected it and said, Hey, listen, did you have a problem last? Like, like during the center, like put together a, like half a page, like pitch, like, tell me what can be done for next time to fix it. Like you have a problem. You were the best person to give me the solution. So give me a mm-hmm. solution. And then you'll have the right of first refusal with a budget to fix it for next year. Like, yeah. because sometimes we don't see problems until you're in it. Right. And, totally. you know, and it, it sucks for everybody and nobody wants people to work like that. And also, you know, when we switch to the risk-based um, quality assurance, some people were, you know, were still of the mindset that more is more. So kind of saying, Hey, listen, you're not being paid to do everything of everything. You're being paid to do, you know, use your professional judgment. So sometimes having those difficult conversations and being like, you might feel like you're doing less, but when you're doing a targeted approach, you're being so much more effective mm-hmm. and you can leave and go do your other work or go do have a summer and having those conversations, which I think was like, we don't want anybody to, it, it's going to be hard enough. Things are going to come up that take enough of your time. So don't yeah. make it any harder. So work with us you know, have those conversations. Um, and also mm-hmm. like when I screwed up, try to like have a moment, be like, this sucks, but then own it and just be totally. transparent. Oh, did I ever learn that in NMC? Just own it when you mess up. Like, well, I guess that's my kind of my whole career. I always watch people who tried to hide their mess ups. I'm like, that's going to come out in a different way. Like, and I know it already, but yeah, that was huge. Like in a fast paced environment that we were in, was create like really tight deadlines. If you screw up and you don't tell someone, we can't fix it. So it was so amazing. The environment we were in, everybody felt comfortable saying, hey, I messed up, but hey, here's how I think we should fix it. Like, yeah. So yeah, I think you just create that environment of comfort. You empathize. Yeah. We, was remote. yeah, we, yeah. We um, divide and conquer. Um, and then having those conversations, like if there was work that came up, it's like, cool, do you want to do this? Do you want to get somebody else to do this? Do you, who's the best person for this? And like, mm-hmm. you know, um, if you, you take on, not you, but like if I or you take on something and I don't know, you say it's going to be done Friday and it's like Thursday and you're like, there's no way. There's it's no like, way. No, yeah. no excuse. Like, no, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, that's a cool. Like, let's, let's reevaluate. Do we still yeah. need that? Can somebody else come in? Like, because that's the other thing too, is like, when you share your work, you're empowering somebody else and you're strengthening your team. And so, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, perhaps the compensation structure or whatever, it'd be a short time hit, but really it's a bigger, like a longer time play. And, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of, if you don't mind me saying a lot of your compensation was you had a variable and you had a fixed portion, but, you know, ensuring that you always looked at the bigger picture like what quality like what is our mission what are we doing here your you know annual you know billables like each year grew because your role and your position grew and what you were contributing to grew yeah you've got to see the future in it for sure and like also you just have to understand that the job will be better for you as well if you put that yeah when you it's not all about how you're paid it's about how is this going to progress the program to the point where everybody else is going to be happier. Things are going to get done better. Like it just, it's a complete all encompassing buy-in. Yeah. Absolutely. Grow the pie, share the, the pie. pie, share the and, pie. Yeah. You know what? Possibly, you know, there, there's, Hey, heck more pie and like yeah. really in, enjoy it a little bit. Yeah. So, all right. Any regrets in completing your CPA? Mm. No, I think some regrets I have are just like, why did I procrastinate so hard? But no, my gosh, my life now, because I did it, is wonderful. Like I met so many people along the way, even all the way from university. I met my best friend at a a module workshop. She broke up with her boyfriend she was crying at my table. Like we had like, it was like elementary where they I, put four Oh yeah, I had together. the same ones. Yeah, Calgary, yeah. the like, yep. She's just crying. I'm like, what's going on? Who are you? And what's going 
fun. And she's like, I broke up with my boyfriend. I have nowhere to live. And I'm like, well, I have a spare room. And that's how we became, we're, we're now best friends. She was just over with her baby. Like you don't, and then you're all of like mind, like getting your CA, you meet, or CPA, you get to meet so many people that are the same mindset. Yeah. It makes you a better person too. I like, I learned so many skills of just how to talk to people in business and outside of business. Um, and it challenged me. All of my friends are smarter than me, I think. And it made me want to be smarter, you know, but just, you, yeah. So you get those skills. Yeah. Um, hey, with that, the National Marketing Center, was that an accounting role that you were in? An accounting role. That's actually, I thought about that because I had to update my resume and I'm like, I don't know. I think it was yes and no. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, and. yes. And yeah, that should be, that should be it. Yes. And because I needed that accounting background to understand the people I was working with. Yeah. Um, and at and times, some, at times yeah. like for the payroll and for like yeah. all, all of that and yeah. all of the data manipulations. So sometimes accounting, like financial data manipulations, sometimes non-financial, sometimes a yeah. mix. Professional yeah. judgment. Spreadsheets. Yeah. Spreadsheets, and professional, professional judgment. judgment, communication, all of oh, that. Oh, and all that, all of that came from getting my CPA. All of that. Like everything stems from the path I took and like the people I met and how, it, how it molded me. You're yeah. right. So yeah, there was accounting aspects, but I don't know. It was, it was a different beast and it was one, it was a wonderful beast, <laughs> but different. I'm glad, I'm glad. Yeah. I, yeah. something that we'll always share and something that we can't, can't yeah. quite always describe. And so like this podcast will go a little bit longer than the other ones, but it's partly just because <sighs> this is, was such a special time in my life. Um, yeah. and in yeah. getting to know you was absolutely one of the highlights and just getting to stretch and grow the program and contribute, contribute to growing the program and grow in each other's like skill sets. Yeah. And that's, I would have to say I grew the most with you hands down. You taught me so much about, I'm just gonna, you know, just <laughs> give you all the compliments. You taught me so much and you say you're like not chill. But you taught me so much about when to focus on an issue, when to not, mm. how to like handle everything with grace. I don't know. It, it, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I grew a lot. Project management was never something I thought it was going to happen in my career. Amazing. And yeah, that was, that was, yeah, it was a steep learning curve, but it was worth it. You like had take on anything so many teams. Yeah. so many moving parts and the best was when um I would just hear people say like oh, I just love working with Caitlin or oh I, like, I heard from Caitlin and like oh, I, yeah. I don't I didn't think that I was like did I did I come up to I don't know yeah because <laughs> like, like we're not delivering good news most Never. of the time by the time people are talking to us like it's not good news like our job is to kind of you know it's all, all the stuff, all the things. And sometimes they're really hard conversations. So I think that that's cool is when people feel heard, they feel respected. They don't necessarily, you know, you don't have to like it, but like here, here's where we're at. And yeah. having, having that kind of long, long-term professional view, because uh, it's not, it's not easy. So it was really nice for me to hear, hear that about, um, about you from, from the, the, the webs. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> all righty. What advice do you have for DAL accounting majors, let's, or even um, management learners, uh, wide encompassing, perhaps in their last two years? So they've already gone through the first two, um, another last couple of years. Yeah. Oh man, I'm trying to think back, but like at the same time, I probably wouldn't do everything I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, same. But yeah, I honestly. My biggest thing, and I'm going to go circle back to it like an annoying person, but balance. Yeah. Um, work your ass off when you have to, but check out when you do to, when you have to, too. And that might not be like, I work my ass off till the end of this project. And now I can have some fun, have some fun in there because that's what I would do. Like those days where like, this is shit. I hate this project. And I'd be like, Hey, I'm going to that bar down yeah. the street. We're just going to go chill, have that moment. I would say, don't take it so seriously all the time it okay. and also <laughs> I hated when people would say things like these are the best years of your life and you, I was like but I'm so stressed 
how, yeah. is this, how is this the best? Yeah. It, it, that's bullshit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank bullshit. you. I've said that too. I was like, it gets better. It's cool then, yeah, but it like gets it gets better. better. Yeah. It gets better. I can't like, I think those people are failing out of university that are saying they failed something. I don't know. They were on the, like, I, I, don't I almost know. just think <laughs> it's like, maybe they've heard it so often that they kind of accept that that is their fate and they need to like make the most out of it. But I'm like, why would you choose that for yourself? Build a life that it gets better and better and better and better. Like I want to be partying at like 80 being like, yeah. Woo! <laughs> being like it's only getting better. <laughs> I, I honestly think every year of my life has gotten better. It's different. Different. Like I, I can't party like I used to. I know it. I'm the first to admit it, but like that, that phase of my life was wonderful in its own way now this one's way better than I thought it would be like or even just like what an ideal afternoon looks like at 22 it looks different at 32 it looks different at 82 like I'm totally. hurting I'm like I probably just finished my prune juice and I'm about to eat a salad yeah. and I'm like yeah feeling all like good and mobile right like because it's different. I'm regular yeah I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like <they're> moving. <laughs> well, like now <laughs> TMI. Um, um, by the way, my friend though got me onto prunes. They are amazing. Not, I'm not great. talking about anything else. They are just delicious. So. Yeah, I'm all about my morning fiber. So yeah. don't get me. I'm. If you get me on that subject, this. this <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll uh, cap it off with like it's. It gets better. Like if it's you better. If you it, want it so to, it gets better. Your life too seriously right now. Enjoy it a bit, and it, just know that it's. It's if you're stressed it gets better. Yeah. 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 But I, I love that. So Caitlin, how do you know when it's the right time to move on from your last job or your role? <laughs> this was an awkward conversation to have with you, Sam. Um, <laughs> you left. <laughs> no. you You're like, you left first, sort of, <laughs> before, but after. <laughs> Oh, I've, and I've, I've hopefully gracefully quit three positions now. Um, and I always find with each one is usually like I've learned a ton and I start to notice myself not being as motivated because I, I don't think there's enough for me to learn anymore. Yeah. That's how I know when it's time that and like a project or a job could maybe have, and this has happened has changed yeah. to the point where like, it's not aligning with my, my work or like my goals anymore. Yeah. And that kind of happened with the NMC for me. I would say both of those things where I've learned a ton from you, you're heading off. And then it changed in a way where like, I didn't see an opportunity for me to learn anymore in a way that I wanted to. Learn. Yeah. Yeah. That's and exactly. And then, I mean, uh, I don't know. I also have a hard time with boundaries. <laughs> yeah, so I, I find if I'm working way too hard, I always try to take a step back and be like, why am I doing this? Is it because of the job? Can I change it? And if I can't, then it's time for me to move on. Yeah. Yeah. I think those are all really great, great reasons. And it just shows like the reflecting and that pausing and taking a step back and yeah, you know, just because something was good or like you were learning, it doesn't mean you know, that things can't change or shift or still be good, but you know, just different, everything can be okay. And yeah. people can leave. And, you know, I feel, you know, similar with different things in the past and the boundaries thing is huge, you know, and knowing your, I think what it comes down to what I hear with you and what I hear within my own story mm -hmm. is like knowing yourself and, you know, for me, it would be nice. Sometimes it takes me a little longer to realize myself. Um, yeah, but like, me too. You, <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> but when you do, it's like, cool. And yeah. it's all good. And it yeah. will always be all good. And, and you know, you you're in the right, or you've met the right people. If they're all about you doing what's right for you and you continue a relationship after like we have, like all of my places that I've left, I'm still friends with people from there and that's how you know like you're you know you you left at the right time you left for good reasons absolutely yeah. I was actually nervous about that when we met up in um in Calgary uh so I was still writing out my last few months and you had left and do you oh. remember that at the Starbucks oh yeah were you were nervous like, 
I, I was a little bit nervous because um, because I really liked you and because I thought we were friends and I just didn't know, I didn't know if it would be weird or different. And like, because when, when you care, um, when I care, I'm nervous about things. So yeah, I was a little bit nervous. And then the moment, like I saw you and we hugged and like, we just sat down and like, I think like several hours passed and like not, no time had flown. Like it was, yeah. it was so lovely to be able to, you know, we ramped up kind of during a work project, got to know each other a lot and then continuing on the friendship afterwards. So yeah, I was, yeah. I was nervous because I, I didn't, you're an awesome human and I didn't want to lose you in my life. And oh. I'm just glad that we were able to make that transition. It was, it was so easy and so lovely. Yeah, it was. And thank you. And ditto. And I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> 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 I'm in the middle of like a sunny day outside your office, sunny day outside my office. And I'm like, oh, I'm just so, yeah, I'm very, yeah. very grateful um, that we can celebrate your quidiversary and my soon to be quidiversary. I believe it's been a year that makes me feel like I need to get my <laughs> no no you're no, doing you're doing great you're contributing to our accounting profession with the up and coming people you're traveling the world you're in, you know I know that you have inspired somebody to kind of take a look at their life and be like fuck yes I want balance I want to travel I want to work hard I want to accomplish things and I'm going to figure out a way maybe it's not this year maybe it's not next year but they're like in five years, like this is the lifestyle I want to design for myself. And you know what? They're going to hit it in three and a half, in four years. And you're going to yeah. get an email or you're going to get a message possibly along the way or at the end. That's like, thank you. Yeah. Right. Because I hope so. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I have no doubt. I would have loved to have, um, to heard you, um, you know, when you were younger, <laughs> I think, and that's all to be said. I, I like, I'm going to sound like a jerk, but I earned this. Like I, I worked yeah. and I think people see it now. We're like, I want this right away. And mm -hmm. we talked about getting that trust and working like you, you have to make sure you, you know, I don't know, yeah. get that experience. You deposit. Right get that away. experience. Yeah. Get those deposits. And then also know that some people along the way might say things like, Oh, you're going to leave at the peak of your career. Or, you know, some, some well-intended feedback yeah. might come yeah. just coming back to like, what are your goals? What's your definition of success? Um, and surrounding yourself with people that, you know, it's not that you cut those people out, but it's like that you don't let the noise affect what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Because that noise will change. Trust me. I saw it. I saw it over three years with, why are you doing this? And now people are like, I'm very unhappy. How did you do this? Tell me, like, teach me how, like, yeah, big time. So relatable. Yeah. When I left the firm, it's very similar. So yeah. Uh, starting yourself with different noise. Hey, yeah. are you, I never knew this. Um, are you big into like audiobooks or books or podcasts or like what? What do you What do you consume? Oh my gosh! And Netflix um, counts. Netflix I always want to read more, but I never do. I'm always like, I'll read. Oh no, I'll watch that. I'll read. No, I'll watch that. <laughs> but I do listen to podcasts. Um, when I walk my dog. And I, I'm, I'm not that educational person. I listen to people like, did you, you know, people give me advice on what podcasts to listen to. Like, there's this really good one about success in business. And I'm like, that sounds horrible. <laughs> I would rather listen to something that makes me laugh when I'm like out on a walk. I'm horrible that way. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So I, I, one that I'm always listening to and I tap in from now time and time, uh, you know, every once in a while. Um, is smart list. I don't know if you listen to it. I haven't. Like, I haven't. What's it about? Oh, it's Jason Bateman, Will Arnett. Um, oh, why can't I remember the last guy's name? Um, and they just interview various public figures, but they themselves are hilarious. They just make fun of each other to the nth degree, and it just wow. reminds me of my friends. So I'm like on walks, <laughs> just laughing. I was actually just thinking about maybe going today. So it's funny that you asked me. And I have one that I want to listen to. And then you're always so surprised by the guests and who is actually entertaining and who isn't. Like you always think the comedians are going to be entertaining, but then like listen to a George Clooney episode. And he like, I was, I was like laughing out loud on my walk and people are like, what's wrong with her? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my hair is covering me. <laughs> I was uh, finishing up a call the other day, like yesterday in yoga and I was on my like Bluetooth and I'm talking oh, yeah. to a woman like, I, I don't really know her super well. We like, we chit chat a little bit in yoga and she comes up and I like wave at her and then I, but she, I'm still like talking to my person and yeah. she's just like, what's going on? <laughs> like, no, this. Yeah, yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, so I listen to Smart Listen Smart a lot. List. And True Crime. Love it. Gotcha. Oh, love True Crime. You're not the first person to say that either. So it's yeah. good. We're getting lots of lots of good um, recommendations here. Yeah. <sighs> hey, Caitlin. Um, yeah. Can students or anybody that's listening to this, would you, would you be open to anybody sending you an email or reaching out to you on LinkedIn? If people Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I would love that. You know, I would love that. I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would think so. What's the best way? Um, email. I'm okay. always on it. Um, okay. I'll link, um, I'll, we'll talk after and I'll link the one that you want to sure. uh, down below. Sure. Um, fabulous. Yeah. Okay. Guys, yeah. Please contact me. We'd love that. <laughs> what should their opener be? Be like the country that they want to visit next or? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or I don't know, a true crime podcast that they love. Yeah. Perfect. I'm addicted. Yeah. Hey, um, any other comments or final things to add? And I, I, I honestly might end up making this a two-part episode because we, we chit-chatted a long, long time, but like, it felt like nothing. But like, I knew this was going to happen uh, at the same time. <laughs> I feel like it might be ended up being two parts. So, you know, it might be reinforcing something that happened near the beginning. It might be something completely different. Um, but mm -hmm. any other comments or anything else to add? Oh, mm -hmm. I think don't be scared of change. I think because I think if the world has taught us anything today, we adapt um, and don't be scared of listening to what you truly want to do. Mm. Um, if you're unhappy, figure out why and take those steps to, you know, make some even small changes, but, uh, and then also just like stick out the university phase. I swear it's, <laughs> it is the best, but it's also not, it gets better. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. I think that's my final comments is like, if there's anything I, I exhibit is like, I took some risks and they paid off. And if they're the right risks for you, they usually do. Yeah. Love it. Thank you, yeah. Caitlin. Thank you.